A very warm welcome to the fourth day of our online Lenten mission. We have reached the middle of this mission program and today we have perhaps the heart of the themes that we are going to reflect about it. The prophet says, My people have committed two crimes. They have abandoned the wellspring of salvation and they dug for themselves broken cisterns that cannot contain water. Often I feel it applies to our attitude towards the Eucharist because we take it so casually, we fail to understand the mystery we celebrate. As a result, we fail to draw the strength and the grace that God is offering us. Today, Father, Joseph Abraham is going to share with us the mystery of the Eucharist that we celebrate. And so let us prepare ourselves to listen to God's word. Lord, you said, where two or three are gathered together in my name, I am there among them. You are with us now. Make us aware of your presence. Help us, Help us to think, think and, and to pray. pray. Lord, we are here to listen to your word. We are here to search for your truth. Speak to us, Lord. Your servants are listening. Help us to think and to pray. Lord, in the noise and bustle of life, it is not easy to find your truth. Help us to be quiet and still. Make us attentive to you tonight. You alone have the words of eternal life. Help us to think and to pray. Lord, by sin and selfishness, we have hardened our hearts. Forgive our foolish ways. Open our eyes to the greatness of your love. Bless us with the truth that sets us free. Help us to think and to pray. Let us pray. God our Father, only you can give meaning and purpose to life. Let your word pierce deeply into our hearts and change our lives so that we may know life at its best and learn to live for your for others. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. We pray for our preacher Father Joseph and for ourselves, for an outpouring of the Holy Spirit upon each one of us. God our Heavenly Father, send your Holy Spirit upon your servant Father Joseph, who is going to break the word of God about the Holy Eucharist so that he may be able to enlighten us. Our hearts may burn with love and charity towards this blessed sacrament. We may understand the abundance of God's love and blessings it contains. And may the same Holy Spirit open our hearts and minds to receive your message through him. Respond to his word and welcome the Lord in this blessed sacrament so that we may experience his abiding presence and his power to protect, safeguard and provide us with all our needs. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John, chapter 6, verses 47 to 51. Truly, truly, I say to you, whoever believes has eternal life. I am the bread of life. Your fathers ate the manna in the wilderness, and they died. This is the bread that comes down from heaven, so that one may eat of it and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever. And the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. The good news, the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear friends, today we are going to reflect on the sacrament of Eucharist. The sacrament of Eucharist is the body of Jesus that he freely shares with us, the blood of Jesus that is poured out for each one of us. And this is so beautifully taking place around the celebration of the Eucharist. The reality of the pandemic, which has taken place in the past few years, has brought a big change to the Eucharist as well. We have moved from our physical presence of the Mass, which we used to participate joyfully, where we used to be present and be a part of this Eucharist in our churches, wherever we are, had to take a very major shift to online Masses, online Eucharists, uh, Eucharistic celebrations, where we all participated. A number of people have been thanking us and have been journeying with us since the start of Masses online, where many of you came to know us and be a part of our Redemptress family through this Redemptress Media Center. Well, the Mass means a lot for us. For a number of people who are used to their daily Masses and Sunday Masses, lockdowns made it very difficult for them to be away from Jesus, to be away from the bread of life, to be away from the Word of God and the sacrament itself. But the revival after the pandemic is also equally important. What made me realize this is an incident which took place last year. I went to give Eucharist to a person, a sick person, an elderly person who was in bed and who was preparing himself for his last days. And this is what he said. Father, every single day of my life, I have been going for Mass. And this pandemic was a big blow for me where I was not able to go for the Eucharist. But online masses brought a big change to me, especially your Redemptress Media Center, where I could participate in this Mass and whenever I wanted, in a more devout way, in a more interesting and lively way. And more than that, Father, I could participate in more than one or two Masses as well uh, with other YouTube channels which brought the word of God so lively to me. But there was always this one regret that I could not receive Jesus in the Eucharist, that I could not receive communion and that some way kept me away from it. And now it is a joy for me that Jesus himself is coming to me, has come to my house. Every single day I went in search of Jesus. Today, Jesus has come in search of me. It is a great joy for me, Father. This is what I longed for. His faith is profound. And his faith taught me something that day. That Jesus certainly comes in search of us. No wonder the Second Vatican Council calls Eucharist as the source and summit of Christian life. It summarizes our entire faith. It is where our faith originates, where our faith starts, where our faith is born. And it is where our faith is going to come to a full realization. We were born around the altar, around the table, where Jesus breaks himself and shares with us. And we will end around the altar, where one day we close our eyes and we will realize that we are around the heavenly banquet. 
And that is where our faith strengthens us. Jesus desires to meet us and be one with us. That is the Eucharist, to, be, to tell it in short. And the biblical basis for Eucharist is the passage that I read for you today uh, from the Gospel according to St. John chapter 6. Jesus feeds the multitude and they come back to him searching only for food. They come back to him searching for bread that their hunger may be filled. But Jesus goes a step further to say, I am the bread that comes down from heaven. The Jews had an experience of bread that came down from heaven. When they were going from their slavery in Egypt to Israel, where they were hungry in the wilderness, where they were longing for bread so that they may pass their life, so that they may live another day, God sends down manna from heaven. And that told them so much. It reminded them that God is a providing God, a loving God. It reminded them that God is there present with them. And it reminded them that God makes them to live. Our life is because of God. It was a physical life that they experienced, that they cherished. Coming now, Jesus is telling something more beautiful. Not just physical life. Not just another meal. But I'm giving myself to you that you may have spiritual life. I am the bread of life that comes down from heaven. Jesus is truly the bread of life. And that is the consolation that we have in the Eucharist. Well, Eucharist is the presence of God. It is the real presence of God himself, of Jesus himself. Because Jesus desires to be with us. We see in the Old Testament... People had the presence of God with them. They had it in a tent, which they called as Shekinah, the presence of God. And in the tent, they had the Ark of the Covenant. And in this Ark, they had manna, which they had gathered. They had the tablets of the commandments, which was given to them through Moses. And they had the rod of Aaron. We see this in the Old Testament. And that reminded them of God's presence. It was there for some time and then it was lost. But in Jesus, he is the living presence that remains forever. Jesus desired to remain with us forever, not to leave us alone, not to just let us go and disappear into, into the skies. He gives his own flesh, his own blood and says, eat of it, drink of it. I am with you till the end of time. And that is what we celebrate in the Eucharist. Jesus is the living tabernacle, the fullness of presence, the bread that comes down from heaven. And we celebrate this presence of Jesus in our Eucharistic celebration, in our Mass that we celebrate. And that is why, for us Christians, it is something very special. It is the center of our faith. It is more than any prayer that we can say. Prayers are words that come from our heart to God, our Father in heaven, to Jesus, our friend, our brother, our Redeemer. But the Eucharist is much more than just words that are said. It is much more than that. I would wish to journey with you through this reflection to say that the Eucharist is a meal that we all eat and cherish. The Eucharist is a celebration that we all celebrate together and the Eucharist is a sacrifice that Jesus has made for us. First of all, the Eucharist is a meal. We often hear that the Eucharist is a sacrifice and it, it, it is a sacrament and it's something very holy and uh, around the altar. Sometimes people limit themselves to say that the Eucharist is a possession of the priests. It is something holy that is meant for a sacred in a particular situation, but we fail to see the other dimension of it. As much as it is a sacrament and it is a sacrifice, it is also situated around a meal. Jesus instituted the sacrament of Eucharist in the celebration of a meal that he had, where he took bread gave thanks to God, broke it, and shared it. And at every meal, Jesus does these four steps. He takes the bread, he gives thanks to God, he breaks it, and he shares it. 
We also see it with his disciples and the Emmaus when they are not able to recognize him and they invite him to come home. He takes bread, he says a blessing, he breaks it, he shares it and there they recognize him and they say, were not our hearts burning with joy when he was sharing the word with us? At every distribution uh, to the multitudes, multiplication of loaves, Jesus took bread, said a blessing to heaven, he broke it and he distributed and people were fed, filled to their full. It happened at the last supper too. Jesus took bread, he gave thanks to God, he broke it and he gave it to his disciples. It was a meal that they were celebrating together. It was a beautiful celebration that they were having together. Meal is always a time of togetherness, a time when we come together and we celebrate together. Meal is always a, something that we don't desire to have alone. There is a big difference having a meal by yourself or by having a meal with people around you. Oh, even when you have a meal at your office, you prefer to sit with someone, with your friend or with your colleague to have that meal because it is much more than just filling your stomach. It is also the presence of someone. It makes you realize that just as I have my hunger, my friend too has his hunger and we all satiate it together. Meal is also an occasion for forgiveness. If you find it difficult to forgive someone, I will think twice to have a meal with him. The last thing a person will do is to have a meal with their enemy, not sure of what is there that is being served to them. Meal is also about service. There is a lot that goes behind the preparation of a meal. Starting from the harvest, where a number of people have put their service into it, their hard labor into it, to the people, the loving people who prepared that meal for us. Meal is much more than that it is about service and jesus reminds us at the supper at the table at the last supper he serves the meal for his disciples and he calls them to serve it to one another no one is left out in a meal jesus includes everyone at the feeding of the multitudes jesus feeds everyone no one is left out uh, at the great meal that is there and therefore, St. John Maria Vianney would make this beautiful quote. He says, Not to go to communion is like someone dying out of thirst beside a spring. Imagine you sitting next to a spring in a desert and saying, No, I'm going to die of thirst. John Maria Vianney says, That is what it is to be at Eucharist and not go for communion. To have the opportunity for a Eucharist and to not receive or not to participate and be as a part of this uh, great banquet. This meal also nourishes us. Meal provides nourishment to us. Jesus tells in his uh, discourse after the breaking of the bread that my flesh is food indeed and my blood is drink indeed. It is a meal that nourishes us, not just our physical body, but it nourishes our soul. It nourishes our very wholeness, our very being, from where it is going to lead us to eternal life. And Jesus goes on to say, the one who feeds on me will have life because of me. We have life because of Jesus. Meal nourishes our bodies and so does the Eucharist do to our soul. Going on further, this meal is a foretaste of heaven, is a foretaste of eternity. Jesus compares eternal life to a banquet where all are invited and where some people give excuses why they can't be a part of this banquet. And Jesus goes on to say that the people from the bylanes are invited to be a part of this banquet. The blind and the lame are called to be a part of this, in, of this great banquet. And so it is with our eternal life. All of us are invited. Some of us have our own excuses to give for this banquet, for this meal. But ultimately, the banquet which begins in the Eucharist, around the table of altar, will one day when we close our eyes, culminate in a much bigger 
greater banquet where we will all sit together and celebrate bread being broken and shared by Jesus to our lives where we will enjoy his presence in full. Well, you all have your banquets and I'm sure you will remember them. The time when you had your whole family together in your house, where you had a great celebration, where you had the best of food, the best of, uh, of whatever the meal that you love to prepare and enjoy around uh, your, your, your very family tables, dining tables, your grandmother's recipe, your mommy's favorite, the, where the, the little ones enjoy the food around it. It brings so much of life to us. It brings so many sweet memories to us. It makes us to long for another meal where we can all come back together as a family and to celebrate once again our togetherness. Meal brings life, brings togetherness. And that is what every Eucharist is supposed to bring. That is what every Mass is supposed to bring. That where we all gather as one family around the altar of God, where we celebrate the presence of one another, where we welcome someone who's not been for a long time, where we cherish the presence of someone we love, and where we share the food that I enjoy with someone else, the presence of Jesus himself with people who are around us. That is what the Eucharist is for each one of us, dear friends. Eucharist online will also be equal to watching the best of banquet on your YouTube channels, by the best of your food channels, where you can see mouth-watering dishes being prepared, tasted, enjoyed, and where you close the channel and go back to your bed, where your stomach is still not fed, where you can see the best of seven-star hotels, but you have not experienced it. Eucharist is experienced when I go to the church participate in it, receive the body of Christ in a worthy way and enjoy the presence of God and one another who is around us. What happens sometimes when I'm not truly uh, worthy of it, present for it? Pope Francis puts it very beautifully uh, in one of his sayings. He says, Eucharist, although it is fullness of sacramental life, it is not the prize for the perfect, but a powerful medicine and a nourishment for the weak. It is a powerful medicine and it is a nourishment. When we think we fail so often, we need to be sustained all the more. When I think that I am constantly falling and re-falling into these addictions or into my life of sin, Eucharist reminds me to get up, to make myself better and to participate in it. It is a food for my life's journey. Not just my last journey, but my everyday journey. My day begins, continues and culminates in this great food, in this great banquet around the altar of God. The Eucharist is also a celebration. Sometimes we find the Mass boring. Sometimes we find the songs not to the best of our year. Sometimes we find uh, the Eucharist as being repetitive and the same that happens every day. Well, the Eucharist is a celebration and we make the celebration. We make it lively by our presence. When I go to my party, when I go to my gather together as my family as, as a party, it's not that I sit there and watch somebody else celebrate. My presence makes a difference. If I fail to dance to the tune, if I fail to sing along with the song, with the music, uh, my life can become boring. My party can become dead. Even in the best of celebration, we can have the longest of faces and go back uh, home disappointed. Eucharist becomes special when we participate, when we make it special. Families are for every day, not just for special days. And so is the Eucharist. The Eucharist are uh, for every day, not just for special days. It's not just a day that I reserve not just for Christmas and New Year and Easter that I celebrate, not just for my baptism or for my sacraments that I celebrate, but it is a daily affair where we participate, where we celebrate, where we enjoy the presence of Jesus and of one another who is with me and around me. It becomes more meaningful when we look at it as a celebration. Yes, when we come to the Eucharist, 
we come with our tiredness, with our boredom, with our low energy levels. We come in spite of our busyness. We come with our distractions and tensions. But the Eucharist strengthens us and makes us better people. It, it soothes our tiredness. It strengthens us in our weakness. It brings joy in spite of our brokenness. And it reminds us that Jesus is there, one who brought life, one who came victorious even over death, comes now to bring life in my brokenness, tiredness and weakness. And that is why the Eucharist again becomes very special. It is a community celebration where we come together to be there for one another, to share our own ordinary lives, to share much more than that, the special events of our life. We come to console each other when they cry and we come to celebrate with each other when they celebrate. That is why most sacraments take place around the Eucharist. Baptism takes place in and around the Eucharist, though it can be by itself. It is beautiful when it is situated in a Eucharist. We come together, we celebrate as a meal the birth of this child being born into the church. Marriages, the sacrament of marriage takes place beautifully in the situation of a Eucharist where we come and celebrate the unity of this couple, the husband and wife, around the altar of God where God throws open his banquet before we go to celebrate our own wedding banquets. And even at the point of death, we come and celebrate, console each other by the presence of our own elder brother Jesus, who has seen death, who has conquered death, and who says, I have many rooms in my father's house. Come, I shall take you. He who eats of my flesh and drinks of my blood will have eternal life, life in eternity. That is what we are promised. And with that great consolation, we participate in that very Eucharist. My dear friends, Eucharist is a celebration, not just another boring exercise. Sometimes it may look serious, but it is a soothing medicine for our hearts, for our soul, for our bodies, which we need for our daily Christian journey. And above all, the Eucharist is a sacrifice. The sacrifice which once Jesus performed on the altar, on, on Calvary, where it was a bloody sacrifice. He tore his body, he shed his blood and gave it for us that we may have life eternal. Happens every day at Mass because he said, do this in memory of me. We celebrate that same sacrifice of Jesus, his body broken, his blood shed, maybe in an unbloody way maybe in not that very gruesome a manner, but still at every altar, Jesus breaks himself and shares with us. Jesus tears himself and pours out with us so that we may have the fullness of life. We may enjoy the fullness of life. Every Eucharist certainly is a sacrifice. What is a sacrifice? Sacrifice is where someone gives what something loves the best for someone else. St. Augustine would so beautifully put it. To make a sacrifice is to surrender something out of love. Something that is ours and something that is very painful to give away, painful to part with. And to let that pain of that surrender stretch and change our hearts in such a way that now we are more open to get into communion with God. That is sacrifice, where I part with something I love the most so that I get into a deeper communion with God. Eucharist is a sacrifice because Jesus gives his own life. He parts with his own life. Jesus, though being God, he did not count equality to be grasped, but he empties himself, taking the form of human beings. That is his first great sacrifice, to sacrifice being God himself, to come down, taking the form of people. And again, to sacrifice even life by embracing death and giving us the fullness of life. In his sacrifice, he gives all his efforts and energies that we may have life. He goes to the extent of emptying himself, his flesh and blood, till the very last drop. And that is what we have. 
And that is why we say that no prayer would equal, would amount to the great prayer of the Eucharist. Eucharist is much more than any prayers that we say in words. It is what Jesus has done beyond prayers. He makes himself a sacrifice and unites all of us with our intentions. What greater prayer can we offer than the Eucharist itself? At every Eucharist, after you receive Jesus in silence, when you cherish his presence, and when you speak to him with your, from the depths of your heart, what greater prayer can that be? To realize that you are already living in heaven. To realize that you are having that foretaste of eternity. And to say, Jesus, one day I will be with you. This is all. I have enjoyed everything. And that is why St. John Maria Vianney so beautifully says, If we truly understand the Holy Mass, we will all die of joy. If we truly understand the Holy Mass, we will all die of joy. My dear friends, make it an opportunity during this time of Lent, which is a time of grace, to visit your parish, to visit a church, to participate in a Eucharist in a wholehearted manner, with, with a prepared heart. Make a good confession if it is necessary. Be pure, be holy. Participate in this Eucharist and enjoy the joy of being with Christ. Receive Jesus into your heart, where you receive him sacramentally into your heart and realize that you too have a foretaste of heaven. And when we truly understand the Holy Eucharist, in the words of St. John Maria Vianney, we will die of joy. May we have the joy always. Amen. Father Lord, we adore you. Jesus, we adore you. Spirit of God, we adore you. Thank you, Lord, for your wonderful presence in our midst today. Thank you, Jesus, for being present for us in the Eucharist, for loving us day and night, for being there always for us, a powerful presence and yet a simple presence, a loving presence and a presence that reminds us that you are there for us. In this Eucharist, you wait for us night and day, no matter whether we are there or not. You make yourself a prisoner in order to set us free. You nourish us, our hearts, our bodies, our soul so that we may not long anymore for anything else in life. And for that, we thank you, Lord, today. Lord Jesus, as we gaze into you in this most blessed sacrament, 
of the Eucharist. We are reminded that in and through the Eucharist, you come to nourish us. You come as a meal to nourish us. You feed us with the finest bread from heaven. And all the more, you enter into us. You enter into our lives. You enter into our relationships. You make a home with us. You dwell with us. And that gives us such great consolation and joy, Lord. Jesus, when you were there on this earth, you visited the homes of so many people. You sat with them. You ate with them. You got into their lives. You got into their meal. And through that, you touched their hearts. You revealed yourself in a more deeper way. You went specially in search of the lost, the sinners, the outcasts, those whom the society thought were not worthy to be as a part of them. You entered their lives by saying, those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick. And with your same presence, Lord, you enthrone today our homes as well our lives as well. You gather us around this beautiful table of the altar where at every single Mass, at every single Eucharist, you fill us with your word and nourish us with your own flesh and blood. What way can we thank you? But just realize that we are not worthy in the silence of our hearts. In our realization of our emptiness, we just say, thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you. Thank you for being there for us. Thank you for nourishing us. Thank you for reminding us that we, when we are fed of your body and blood, enter into relationship with you on this earth, we will also enter with you in relationship around that heavenly banquet where you will continue to fill us with the fullness of your presence where what we see today as a sacrament in part we may experience in wholeness where we fail to understand and grapple in our faith of how the simple bread turns into your body and blood one day we will be able to embrace in fullness today what we feed as body and blood one day we will experience in person, be with you forever and sing your praises with your angels, saints and all heavenly hosts. And so, Lord, we join together in singing this beautiful song of adoration, down in adoration falling. <laughs> Given them bread from heaven, containing in itself all sweetness. Let us pray, O God, who in this wonderful sacrament has left us a memorial of thy passion. Grant us, we beseech thee, so to venerate the sacred mysteries of your body and blood, 
that we may ever experience within us the fruit of thy redemption. You who livest and reignest world without end. Amen. The divine praises, blessed, blessed be, be God, God. Blessed, blessed be His holy name, blessed, blessed be Jesus Christ, true God and true man, blessed, blessed be the name of Jesus, blessed, blessed be His most sacred heart, blessed, blessed be His most precious blood, blessed be Jesus in the most holy sacrament of the altar, blessed be the Holy Spirit, the Paraclete, blessed be the Great Mother of God, Mary most holy, Blessed, blessed be her holy and immaculate conception. Blessed be her glorious assumption. Blessed be the name of Mary, virgin and mother. Blessed be Saint Joseph, her most chaste spouse. Blessed be God in his angels and in his saints. My dear friends, thank you very much for being with us in today's this mission program. And I'm sure listening to the word of God will help you to meaningfully participate in the Eucharist, which is a sacrament and our table fellowship with Jesus the risen Lord. Maybe as a follow-up of this reflection about the Eucharist, one thing that you could do is go to any church or especially where there is the adoration going on. Spend an hour in adoration, either personally or it will be better if you can take the whole family and together as a family spend some time in prayer, thanking and praising God for the abundance of his blessing that he has showered upon you and your family. Keep Jesus as a center and focus of your personal life and the family life. For our reflections tomorrow, we have a very important theme that is about prayer. St. Alphonsus said, if I were to preach only one sermon anywhere in the world in my entire life, I will speak about prayer because that is the greatest gift that God has given to us, to pray. So tomorrow, we will reflect about our own prayer life. And it can be a great inspiration for us to grow in our spiritual life. The closing prayer. Lord, forgive us all the wrong we have done this day. Forgive us if we have been bad-tempered and hard to live with. 
Forgive us if we have hurt those who we, we should love. Forgive us if we have made life more difficult for anyone. Forgive us for any word of comfort or praise or thanks which we could have spoken but did not speak. Forgive us for the help we could have given to someone in need but did not give. Lord, we pray tonight for all humankind, for the good and for the bad, for the believer and for the unbeliever, for those who are trying to find you and for those who are trying to ignore you. Bless those who are lonely and who feel their loneliness worst of all at evening time. Bless those who are old or sick and who will not sleep tonight. Bless those who are away from their families and miss their beloved ones. Bless all homes and families and bless those who have no home of their own. Give us all sleep and peace of heart that comes from knowing that our sins are forgiven and that we are always in the hands of our Heavenly Father. Amen. Amen.
Without you